Now, what about the parasympathetic nervous system? The parasympathetic nervous system works in opposite of the sympathetic nervous system, where you have the sympathetic nervous system responsible for the fight or flight response, and it put you in survival mode. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for resting and digesting. It puts your body in healing mode, where most of the growth, healing, and repair occurs. So, when your body is not under a lot of stress or danger, the parasympathetic nervous system is activated. And when it is activated, you, we will have a lower heart rate and a lower force of contraction. That means your heart will be beating more slowly and less forcefully. And the blood pressure will go down. Another thing that will happen is that there will be an increase in blood flow going to your digestive system and to your skin. So, your digestion will be most effective when the parasympathetic nervous system is under control. So, and what happens when you are absorbing in a lot of food? The food needs to go somewhere to be stored. And the best place to store the food that being taken in is in your fat cells. And most of the fat cells are located um, around the skin. So it all makes sense for the blood to go to be direct, directed more towards the digestive system and to the skin. Now the problems arise when there is an imbalance in the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Back to the example where you were being chased by the lion. Now, when that happened, the sympathetic nervous system is activated and your blood pressure goes up. Now, in real life, that should only happen for a few minutes. And then the, when the danger disappears, the parasympathetic nervous system should kick in and your blood pressure should go down again. What happens if there's always some stress or danger that stays with you for a prolonged period of time? Then your sympathetic nervous system will remain active for a prolonged period of time and your blood pressure will stay up for much longer than it should be. Now, let's go back to the causes list and see how each of these causes leads to higher blood pressure.